Jeremiah chapter 15. Then said the Lord unto me, Though Moses and Samuel stood before me, they were intercessors. Moses and Samuel would pray for the nation of Israel. They would step in. They'd be a type of Jesus Christ, a type of Holy Spirit. By the time if Moses didn't step in, Israel would have been gone. Yet my mind could not be toward the pe this people. Cast them out of thy sight and let them go forth. Now God is just as angry as Judah as they were, as he was with angry with the children of Israel in the wilderness with Moses. As the children of Israel in the land through Samuel. And unlike Moses and Samuel reaching out to God, God's telling Jeremiah, and we've seen in a few places, don't pray for him. God has had enough. I've given him chance after chance, years after years after years. It is time for chastening. As a mother sometimes would protect her child, there's a point that the father would say, I'm not listening to it no more. That boy, that girl needs to be chastened. That's the only way they're going to learn their lesson. No. Gosh, don't say another word. Because I'm not going to listen. When that boy or that girl gets home, you tell them, I want to see him. And they're in trouble. And nothing's going to stop. No words of mother. Maybe a grandparent. Moses. Jeremiah. Samuel. God's, I, I, I've had it. I've had it. Now God is not going to destroy them. Though many are going to die. And go into a place called hell. But there will be a redmond. You will have story of Shadrach, Meshach, and Daniel. You will have the names of Ezra and Nehemiah. God ain't finished with them. Because believe me, as some people teach, if God was all finished with the Jew, God had plenty of time. God had plenty of examples. God had plenty of events. He could say, that's it, you're done. He told Moses one time, he said, I'm done with them. I'll make of you a nation. And it shall come to pass, if they say unto thee, Israel, Judah, whither shall we go forth? <laughs> and the only answer, that, the only reason for that question is, how am I going to save my hide? Then thou shalt answer, tell them, thus saith the Lord, such as death to death. Such as for the sword to the sword, war. Such are famine to the famine. And such are for the captivity, captivity, death. death. War, death, battle, famine, you're going to die. And then there's a captivity, that's the only hope you have. And then Jeremiah later on is going to lay out, God's going to say, all right, if you go with the Babylon, there will be peace. I'll take it. And they fight God on that one. And they won't listen. They're beyond listening. I, I think the rapture of the church is not to how great we are, it's how terrible we are. God's like, that's it. I'm done with them. Take them off that earth. And bring them up to me to the judgment. Bring me to the judgment seat of Christ. Because they're not listening. I will appoint, well, well, will appoint over them four kinds, saith the Lord. The sword to the slay, war. The dogs to tear, animal attacks. Unclean dogs. The fowls of the heaven, birds, unclean birds. And the beasts of the earth, and those that will attack the animals, attack human beings, they're unclean. 
scavenger. God's going to use what is unclean in the law. War. If you're dead, you touch a dead body. You were unclean. They're going to die in uncleanness. Again, that, that possibility under the law of the death and hell. I mean, Old Testament law, you had no idea if you were saved. And I will cause them to be removed into kingdoms of the earth, captivity, because of Manasseh, the son of Hezekiah, king of Judah, for that which he done in Jerusalem. We looked at that, 2 Kings 21, and 2 Chronicles 33. He repented. Remember, we set forth last time. He is an example to the nation of Judah. Hey, I was just as wicked you were. And I got right. How many men and women stood up for Chadrach, Meshach, and Indigo? Only three of them? For who shall have pity on upon me, O Jerusalem? You see, Judah saying, well, I'm God's child. Yeah, you are God's child, and you can't lose that. Corporately, but you know, you get to the point who shall bemoan me? Who shall go aside to ask how do with thou? Do I do it? Thou hast forsaken me, saith the Lord. You left me, you left me, you left me. And we look at chapter 14. Well, God, why'd you break the covenant? No, 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 God didn't break the covenant. God didn't do it. You did it. Thou art going backward. Backslid is what we've been saying. You're going the wrong way. Therefore will I stretch out my hand against thee. You got an enemy. And it's not Babylon. You got an enemy called God, Jehovah, your father. And destroy thee. And I am weary with repenting. I'm tired of your repenting. I'm tired of your, your, your Indian crocodile tear. I'm sorry. And you go back and do it again. I'm tired of your faults. Pleading. Saul was the great example of that. King Saul. I will fan them with a fan. In the gates of the land. And that, that, that picture is the, the threshing. You know, that, that wheat is cast up into the air. It's fanned. And the chaff is blown away. And the kernels of nut falls to the, the, the floor. And that which is no good to man blows away. God's like, I'm going to throw you up in there. I'm going to blow that wind. There you go. Now there will be some husk and kernels that fall to the floor. I will bereave them of children. I'm going to take it. You, we read Manasseh was killing his children. They are taking their children to Molech. And, all right, you want to do that? I'll take care of your children. You know, it's amazing in America today. We've got children killing. Hold the wait, wait, wait a minute. Wait a minute. You've got mothers that have been killing their babies in the womb. You've been having mothers who've been having abortion. You've had fathers that say, go ahead, honey, get the abortion. I'll even give you them. You've had boyfriends. And you had affairs. They'll give you the money. Go get the abortion. Galatians 6, 7. Okay, now the children are doing the killing. I mean, you taught them evolution. Monkey to monkey. The monkey will take the banana and kill you with it. Monkeys don't want to share the banana tree. That's what you've been teaching. I will destroy my people. 
So let me tell you something. Let's bring it up to today. If God destroyed the Jews, and he did, he left the remnant for their sins, what do you think that God's going to do with the Christians who are his people who sin? What do you think their attitude is? You read Revelation 3, we're rich, we're wonderful, we're great. And God's like, no, you're not. Well, we walk down the middle of the road. God said, okay, fine, get the big bus started. You want buses? I'll give you a bus. I'll give you a bus to flatten you right down the middle of the road. Since they returned not from their way. The Christians are not returning from their ways. Again, I just saw it today, VBS. Trying to find God. Treasure Island ever was. You don't need a treasure island to find God. Get the kids sit it down at a table in a Bible and get an instructor and teach them what the Bible says without the cookies, without the games, without the craft. Teach them the Bible. Well, they won't be interested. How do you know? There have been some great men that come out of hellfire preaching tent meetings. Your BBS has had them brought nothing. I got kicked out of a church because I said, it's too much decoration. This is ridiculous. All your de decoration is a, is a, the word came on my head. Oh, what's Word come out of my head quite often. A distraction. All this you got here is a distraction. If you don't like it, you don't have to come back. Okay, bye. And then get an email, a long list of, no, 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 ain't no email. You told me to leave your church because of the distraction. Their widows are increased to me. Death, death, death. Above the sand of the sea. There's a lot of widows. Their husbands are dying. I have brought upon them against the mother of the young men a spoiler at noonday. Someone's come along and it's stolen. Taken. She's a widow. She has nothing. And so and the army's come along and taken what she had. I have caused him to fall upon it suddenly. All her stuff and the terror is upon the city. Listen, Babylon's gonna come. And they're going to kill and they're going to loot and they're going to steal and they're going to destroy. They're going to burn. They're go as <laughs> when Babylon leaves, Jeremiah writes to us a book called Lamentations. She that has born seven children. So it's saying language. Her children are gone. She has given up the ghost. Now she dies. She has died before her sons have died. Her son has gone down while it was yet day. She died early. Young. Not a full term. She has been ashamed and confronted. Knows how the shame and confronted keeps showing up. And the residue of them will I deliver to the sword. Anybody left? Here comes the, here comes the war. Here comes the Babylonians. Before their enemies, they have Lord. Man, it says death after death after death after death. So what do we read in the Bible? What is the interesting verse that we find in the Bible for the Christians? And it's written to Christians. I know we use it for... Evangelism, but it's written to Christians. The wages of sin is death. There it is. There is the Old Testament version of the wages of sin is death. The more Judah sins, the more death is going to be. And there'll be no relief from God. Because they haven't gotten right. They haven't repented. They haven't turned to God. The Christian. I don't know what some of these churches and all that, you know, God's just going to keep putting up and we're just going to die of an old age. 
Have you not read what it says about the Lord's Supper? If you have no regard, it could be sickness, it could be death. That God can take his children, Christians, away if they sin? You say, well, how do you do that? All right, keep on drinking your alcohol. God gives you cirrhosis of the liver, you die early. Go ahead, keep on smoking your cigarette. God gives you lung cancer, and you die early. Go ahead, keep on messing with women and men. You ought not to be outside the marriage bed, or even adultery, and all in fornicate. God gives you a sexually transmitted disease, and you die, and go, you can die before your time. Woe is me, my mother. That thou was born a man in strife. Happy birthday to you. Jeremiah's making fun of birthdays, just like Joe. There's your birthday. Well, to me, I've been born. There it is. There are men in the Bible. Oh, I wish I was never. Hey, I'm in that state. There are things in life. There's things on this earth. There are things in this world. Oh, man, I wish I was never born. I wish I never brought my children into it. Not that I don't love my children. It's just, uh, I don't want to see. I feel sorry for children that are born today. I feel sorry when I hear that women are pregnant. And they're going to give birth to a child in the messed up, cruel world that we're in. And then you go to church. Happy birthday to you. You live in a worldly zoo. We don't go for the second birth. You're as carnal as the Corinthians. Ooh. Can't find one place in the Bible where they say happy birthday. Or fun. You gotta have fun. I guess you might as well have your fun now because you ain't gonna have fun in the world. You ain't gonna have fun in, in hell. So have it now, I guess. A man of contention to the whole earth. Yeah, born, earth, worldly life. Listen, I am pleased. I am happy in the Lord God. I am happy. I am wonderfully happy in the Lord. In this world and in this life, I know two men in my life. <clears throat> they worked hard. They had a home. They took care of their family. Unsaved at that point. One man got saved later. The other man never got saved. And a medical illness. Well, actually, one guy, his company sold out his sold his job out to another company. He lost everything he had while he was in the hospital. The other man worked for a good, worked for a good industry. Had great things. He blew his money and booze and women, boats, and all that. And they had houses. And they end up in a nursing home. One lost it all, and one will lose it all. One is saved, will die and go home to glory. One is, one's died and going to hell. And I look at that, saved a lot. They worked hard for a living, and they ended up, both of them ended up in a nursing home. I know a woman who ended up in a nursing home. Lost. Didn't do so well with her family. Nursing home is not a, it's not a good end, even for a Christian. Even for a lost man going to go to hell. That's not a good end. Like I said, sometimes I, we got a little chihuahua. I look at my little chihuahua and she's She's hurting. She, she, I was like, what did that dog do? The world is so cruel. I had to call my insurance company the other day. And, you know, listen, okay, I don't mind. i got to pay a copay for a specialty doctor. But when I go to a specialist doctor and the very first appointment, they're not going to do nothing. They take down information and they still charge me 25 That's cruel. And then when you get to the point that they made you broke, they made you, they have no money, you have no more resources, and then you go, you go, well, okay, the very first thing they ask you in the doctor, $25 to copay, copay too. 
Why well, ain't got no copay? And the biblical doctor called Luke wrote to us in his gospel a woman that spent all she had in her doctor. That even happened in the time of Jesus. There were people who spent everything they had and all they had meant just for illnesses. And then you get these deceivers by the devil that show up. You know, be healed. Your faith will be healed. And they're so much in pain. They're so much in misery. They'll try anything. And then when it fails, the faith healers will blame them for the lack of faith. No, you're a swindler. That's the wages of sin. Hey, I'm going to evangelize. I, 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 I'm a, I'm a sinner. I sin against God, but I go out and witness, and my lungs are now affecting my life. What? Do I get a do not pass, go, do not click? I mean, do not, I mean, do I do I get an out of jail free card? That's what I'm trying to say. I land, go to jail. Well, I got a card. Well, no, 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 no. That don't work with sin. God is merciful and gracious, but we have Galatians 6, 7. And Judah is in the point of Galatians 6, 7, though it's not written. Hey, you've been reaping with the wages of sin, not written yet, is death. You know why Christians die? Well, they're saved. They die. Why did they die? Because they still sin. I have neither let the usury, that's interest payment, nor men have let have lent to me on usury. <laughs> you gonna run to the old you gonna run to the old testament to the law? Walk up to a bank guy, say you can't ever go to you can't go to heaven. Well, why not? When you give somebody a loan, do you charge them do you charge them interest? That's what that is. Well the law says you're not supposed to charge them interest. That's the law. But the law was written to the Jewish people. Jewish people were not to charge Jewish people interest. Now, a Jewish could charge the Gentiles. Jeremiah said, I gave the guy uh, some gold. I didn't charge him from interest. You know, that, that's the least of the law. Yet, everyone that them does curse me. <laughs> Jeremiah says, listen, I am getting it. I'm doing the best I can before God. Jeremiah is a sinner. I'm doing the best I can. A couple weeks ago, you know, at the farmer's market, what I know, listen, I'm a sinner. I've sinned. I'm not perfect. I thank God God put me in a church now. When they teach, I'm getting under conviction again. I had a guy come up to me. Um... You glutton, fat pig. Is that the best you can do? I mean, okay, yeah, I'm fat. I'm not fat because I'm glutton. I'm a fat because because my grandmother, my mother, and Lisa, my wife, and Tracy, my wife, were all going fast on to heaven, except for my mom and, and, and my daughter. They're taking care of me well. It's not gluttony, it's a blessing of God. And they'll find, now I'm reading a book right now about the ministry and all. They'll find something minute, a little tiny thing, no matter what. You don't think so? They had to lie about the things they found about Jesus. But they found things lyingly about Jesus. You know what they? You know what he said? He said, "Destroy this temple in three days, or build it." Well, yeah, you took it out of context. For what the churches do today, the Lord said, "Verily, it shall be well." I forget the turn I'm sorry. Verily, Lord, verily, Lord said, "It shall be well with the redmen, those that do and survive, that will go." To Babylon, and there'll be a few left in the land. 
Verily, I will cause the enemy to entreat thee well. Even Jeremiah, he is released out of prison by the Babylonians. The Babylonian captain of the guard shakes off the dust of, of Jeremiah, gives him food and water. I'm not sure. I think he even gives him money, but I, I don't I'll have to read. He said, Jeremiah, you, hey, I tell you what. You want to come with me back to Babylon? You get, you, I'll put you on my, my beast and we'll, we'll take you to Babylon. If you want to stay here and, and be amongst the land, and, and the be you stay here. But I want to tell you something, Jeremiah. Yeah, yes, sir. And then he tells, and he goes into a message to Jeremiah on how the Jews, Judah, have failed God, and this is why all this has happened. And you know what? You know, you know what that, that Gentile army captain does? He confirms to Jeremiah Jeremiah's message. You know, God does that to me. There are things throughout the week that I will say and I will do. And when I go to church or I'm reading my Bible or study the Bible, that God will put it right back. Hey, I said that. Hey, that's what that guy said to me. Hey, that's what happened to me this week. So there is a remnant. God is not finished all done with Israel and Judah. He's not. For the time of evil and the time of affliction shall iron break northern Babylon, north iron, and the steel. Judah, you really think you're going to conquer Babylon when you have me as your enemy? No, it's not. You see, the Jews think, we're, we're, we're of God, we're going... No. You know what happened to Samson? I'm going to get up, I'm going to shake myself like other... No, the Holy Spirit departed from you, Samson. Thy substance, thy treasures, will I give to the spoil without price. Everything you have, everything that is of a, of a value in Judah is going to Babylon. An army official. And I give to the spoil without price. They're going to take that all for all thy sins. Even all thy borders. That's almost like a wage of the sin is death. But you know what? Because of your sins. That oil. that Those olive yards. There's a, ba there's a Babylonian army man. He's going to come. And he's going to take it. And he's going to enjoy it. That wine you've been making from your vineyard. The Babylonians are going to love to drink it. That big fatted calf. That you've been saving. It's going to be a barbecue for the for the, the heathen. And I will. You got to, I mean, the will of God, the will of God. That's the will of God. You know that? Make thee pass with thy enemies into a land which thou knowest not. Babylon. You know, Jeremiah knows that place. Jeremiah went there with a the girdle, remember? The people in, in, in Judah, now in Jerusalem, they've never been to Babylon. Jeremiah was there. For a fire is kindled in my anger. It shall burn upon you. First degree fire would be cooking, heat. Second degree burn would be God's anger, and third degree burn would be hell. They're already saying now that there's a hurricane starting coming. Uh, they're early, I think. They're saying that we are in a in a heat heat thing, and out west, I mean, it's already to the extreme and causing fires. 
And yet America's not turning. America's not repenting. You need to open the book of Jeremiah and read and study. You want a revival in America? Don't do what the Judeans don't do what Judea is doing. Refusing and rejecting God. Refusing and rejecting God. O oh Lord, thou knowest. Remember me and visit me, Jeremiah, and revenge me on my persecutor. Jeremiah is being persecuted for preaching the word. If you are if you're a Christian and you're loved by the world, and the Bible says, Marvel not my brethren, my brethren, you say, if the world hates you. The world loves you, you're not doing something correct. The only time they love Jesus is when Jesus did something for them. That's the way it is. Paul had the church as his own enemy. Take me not away in thy long suffering. Know that for thy sake I have suffered rebuke. It's because of you, Lord God, I'm getting rebuked. It's because of you, Lord, I'm having trouble. Even in the Old Testament, anybody who stood up with the truth and stood up for the word of God and stood up for God suffered. That's a Bible long thing that goes all the way back to Abel. And the modern church tries to change it. They try to conform. They don't like people picking on them. They don't like to be offensive. That's the very nature. Thy words, let's see about the words, were found by Jeremiah. And I did eat them. There's a couple men in the Bible that eat the word of God. John, one of them. I think Ezekiel. Thy words was in me the joy and rejoicing of my heart. For I am called by thy name, O Lord God of hope. Today you would say Christian. But there was no Christian back in Jeremiah. There was no Christian in the Old Testament. <coughs> I got one priest. Well, there were Christians, but no, 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 no. They were called sons of the prophets. They were called men of God. I sat not, not in the assembly of mockers. There are people mocking God. Nor rejoiced. I sat alone because of the hand. For thou hast lifted me with indignation. Why is my pain perpetual? Jeremiah is getting a hard life in the ministry, which refuses to be healed. Wilt thou altogether be unto me as a liar? Oh, Jeremiah. Whoa. As the waters that are failed. Jeremiah is getting a little bitter. I mean, he's not getting loves and kisses from the ministry. But then again, Jeremiah's, Jeremiah is doing it right. He's not doing it of the world. How much of a congregation does Jeremiah have on Sabbath morning? Zilch. Does Jeremiah have a steeple? Does he have pews? He doesn't even have a wife. He doesn't even have one convert. In the eyes of today's Baptist churches, Jeremiah would be a failure. How could God call him? You know, in our Sunday school, we got 25, we got 100, we got 150, we got 18 buses, we got 100 buses. Jeremiah, you're a failure.
Therefore thus saith the Lord. Uh oh, God can answer. If thou return, then will I bring thee again. Thou shalt stand before the stand before me. And remember, God already yelled at Jeremiah before. If you know, what was it? If you can't stand before the horsemen, what about the what about the horses? If you know what swollen, what about the swollen the Jordan River? Jeremiah is going to get worse. <laughs> You know, God has done something to me I don't see he's done to Jeremiah. And I need to count my blessings. There are, I'm going to say most of the time. And if there's any word between most and all the time, whatever that word is, let me tell you something. I have had a street ministry. I've had many people come up to me and they just bawl me out, cuss me out, yell me out, scream me out, whatever it is. They give God a hard time, not me, God. They hate God. They're not happy with God. And it's in the name of styling by them. And I'll tell you right now, most between all the times that happens, God will send somebody later that day. Hey, man, I really like what you're doing. Wow, keep it up. Well, man, hey, listen, can, can, we, talk, can we pray? Or as I'm getting yelled at, God will send somebody and, and you know, now we got two people working against the healing. Or I'll go to the store, you know, tell uh, I gotta get some things at the store. We go there, run to the cashier, and we're having a good old time while she while she's ringing it up, and we're talking and praising God. And this has happened through my my entire ministry. That when when we get bad things, God sends somebody as an encouragement to me. You know, I don't see that with Jeremiah. I don't see anybody except for later on Baruch. I don't see anybody come walk up to Jeremiah. I'm glad you're doing what you're doing. Keep it up. And if thou take forth, if thou take forth the precious from the vial, thou shalt be as my mouth. Let them return unto thee, but return not thou unto Jeremiah. God says, God, God says, I don't know how God spoke. I don't know if it was an audio voice. I don't know if it was dreams. I don't know if, how God did it. Jeremiah, you're doing exactly what I want you to do. Remember when we first met? Remember when we first started? I told you don't be afraid of their faces. I told you they're not going to listen. I told you. It only assures Jeremiah that I am pleased with you, though they are not pleased with you. Now, what are you going to do with ministries and churches today? Everybody's pleased with the pastor. How great a pastor are. How great of a church we have. I've even heard the world, you know, oh, that church there. Yeah, how's God feel? That's my question. We got the greatest church. What does God say about your church? We got the greatest pastor. What's God say about your pastor? I let my light shine. What's God say about your light? That's not what, that's not what God do. That's what Jesus wouldn't do what you're doing. You're turning people away. All right, what's God think about it? What's God have to say? That's, that's the question. I don't care what you think. I don't care what you say. What's God say? And again, I'm relating Jeremiah to Judah, Old Testament, history. I'm relating Judah to the state of America today. I am resulting Jeremiah to the state of the world today. I am resulting the book of Jeremiah to the state of the Christians and the churches today. Jeremiah is like, hey, I, I'm getting it, Lord God. They're rebuking me. And, they're, and God says, you're doing good. But my brethren, the priests, they hate Hey, you're doing a good job. I, I like how they hate you. And 
and the priests and the people are off in the bushes somewhere. You know, Jeremiah, blah, 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 blah. And pastors and churches, they're talking about Christians, sir. Blah, 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 blah. And what's God saying? And if they don't repent, or somebody does not repent and get right, either side, what is going to be said at the judgment seat of Christ? Now, I have a notion, and I could be wrong. I've been wrong before. But <clears throat> wouldn't it be interesting, you get a Christian, and he earns rewards, and he earns an inheritance. He gets a city. What if God gives that Christian a city and he tells those people who harassed that Christian, who has mocked that Christian, has put that Christian down, they don't have any crown, they don't get an inheritance, they don't get no reward, they don't hear it well done. All right, you guys come here that were against that Christian. Come here. You didn't like him? Well, yeah, and he didn't like Christmas. He didn't like, he tried to tell me what to buy. All right, I'll tell, him, tell you what. You know, he gets a city. He gets city X, Y, Z. Now, he gets a city. They're not going to say that. Then the guy in the vineyard said everybody's going to work for a penny each day. At the end of the day, the people came up. They said, well, they get a penny. You know, look at those. Now, this is my own saying. You can take it and throw it in the garbage. All right, you guys that did not like that Christian that was doing my service, I was well pleased with that person. That's my son. I'm going to give him a new name, a good faithful name. Now, he's going to go get his. We're going to mount up on our horses. And when, when we get into, into Israel, I'm going to give him a city. You guys are under him. He's in charge of you. Now, wouldn't it be great for that Christian to serve, serve the Lord and his pastor of his church is now under that man? Maybe the church that guy attended. All right, we're settling in. All right, come on, guys. Come over here to my city. We're going to, you know, we're going to spend the next hundred years on how, what our pastor of our church taught us wrong. Day number one, well, until we, we're going to do a long study, but we're going to deal with Easter. How Easter was wrong. And we're going to do how Eros was wrong. And we're going to do how, how Christmas is wrong. How? Jeremiah. Hey, come here for a minute. Who's that with you? Moses, Jeremiah, Moses, you want to come over here with my class here for a minute? I, I got a question for you guys. What's your Hi. You guys were Old Testament, right? Oh, I know you were tribulation too, but you you guys were in Old Testament, right? Yeah. Moses, you had a whole congregation of, of, of people in the wilderness. You did. Jeremiah oh, really does. You want to tell the, the, the people here how many people were called Christians? Really? None? Moses, would you like to give us an illustration of in the Greek? It was a language. You didn't know in the Greek? And can you imagine having a pastor who, who, had, who and, and Christians who have failed and had the love of the world and not the love of God? Can you imagine him having to be rebuked? I hate him. Oh, he talks about Jesus. His car has bumper stickers all around it. Maybe God will give you a camel that's been the camel's been shaved or, or Jesus, Jesus, all over it. I know that's foolish. And I will make thee unto this people a, a fence brazen. That's chapter one. You see, Jeremiah's getting tired. Jeremiah's getting pulled down. Jeremiah's getting frustrated. Why? Because of God's people. I have been frustrated. I have been put down. I have thought about quitting. I have thought about just giving it all because of what? God's people. Some of them are God's ministers behind the pulpit. That's it. I'm done, Lord. That person turned on me? That person, that person is saying I'm lying about them? 
That's it, God. I'm done. I'm finished. This, I expect the world, not your people. God's like, just calm down, repent of your sins, I'll take care of it. No, Lord God, you're not taking care of it. Whoa, what? D destroy their church, destroy, I mean, because it's not good, it's not right. You just calm down, there'll be a day of reckoning. But Lord, people are being, dis that's because that's what they want to be. Remember? Remember what you teach? You just do right. Listen, you're a sinner too. You confess your sins sometimes. You, you, you do the best you can for me. I'm well pleasing you. Don't, don't envy. Don't fret not. Just. And they shall light against thee. Fight against thee. Isn't that a great ministry? Jeremiah, they're going to fight you. That's not your modern, liberal, Baptist teaching today. And, and similar, Everybody's going to love you. No, they're going to fight you. They're going to yell at you. They're going to scream at you. They're going to cuss you out. They're going to lie again. Oh, Lord, you mean the world? No, I mean the Christian. And they shall not prevail against thee. They're not going to win. For I, God, I am. I am. Moses, tell them I am. I am with thee to save thee and to deliver thee, saith the Lord. Now that's comforting words of Jeremiah. Remember, Jeremiah can't say one convert. Now, I can name men from prison. I can go in my prayer book. I can go in my, my other Bible that's over here. I can find names of people I've written down that believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. God allowed me to be present with my, I don't know if he's through my father-in-law, his daughter passed on, into glory. But my father-in-law, I was there the day he got saved. The Lord allowed me for that. My wife, my first wife, I brought her to be saved. Men in prison got saved. Men in prison gave up their modern Bibles for a King James Bible that God used me. Jeremiah can't say that. I can say God has given me a wonderful, great wife. And God gave me a mediocre wife. And I'm praying for God for another wife. Jeremiah had no wives at all. Jeremiah had no children. I, I got wonderful children serving the Lord. I will deliver thee out of the hand of the wicked. That's Judah. And I will redeem thee out of the hand of the terrible. That's Judah and Babylon. I'll take care of you, Jeremiah. And then chapter 16, we're going to get into the unmarried prophet. Now me, I'm praying for another wife. I, I, I'm, just, I'm that type of person. Jeremiah won't have a wife. And there's nothing more of a blessing when you get when God's giving you a saved wife who loves the Lord and comforts you and aids you and helps you. Don't give up. Keep going. Keep doing. Jeremiah didn't have that. Jeremiah's own hometown, the priest, want him dead. 